Alhamdulillah, shalom la 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 wa ta'ala sharikala. We praise God and we bear witness there's no other God beside God. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. How's it going? Uh, so, oh, a few announcements real quick. So, there's charity on Sunday at 2. Um, and this Saturday, there is no uh, picnic happening anymore. And the last one is that every, or on Saturdays, there's a, there's a after party at, I think, 11.30 in the morning. So, please join, God willing. Um, but yeah, those are the announcements. So, um, today, God willing, I would like to talk about how we as submitters are different from general society and how blessed we are to be. So, let's get into it. So, so um, my main point that I want to kind of drive throughout this is that the only reason that we are different from society is because we understand God's system and we follow God's laws. And um, a lot of these points, to me, throughout doing this sermon, I've noticed that, like, a lot of them pertain to God being the best psychologist and how God knows us way better than we even know ourselves. And I also want to kind of really focus on the point of how immensely blessed we are to be able to call ourselves submitters and to have this message. And we should try to make the most of it every single day of our lives because we cannot take something like this for granted ever. So the first topic that actually got me uh, thinking about this whole thing was when COVID happened because I, everywhere I looked, I would see how we as submitters acted when this whole thing happened versus how the general society was acting during this whole time. And that kind of really got me thinking about this whole topic in general. So that'll be the first thing I talk about. Um, I'm sure you guys remember the mass hysteria right around the first two weeks that was going on. Um, you know, you'd hear people talking about how worried they were to catch it, to give it to someone, to die, right? And we've seen all the extreme measures. I'm sure you guys have seen all the memes on the meme pages of people just going way over the top with whatever protective gear they were wearing. And I actually have a little funny story. Um, it was, I think, March 20th, or like when it first happened, and I think like that week, I was with like two of my friends, and they were kind of like on the same wavelength as I was, where they didn't really care. Um, and so I remember I posted like a picture on Snapchat of us just like hanging out, and all these people replied to it, and they were like, what are you doing, dude? Like, you could spread this virus, you could spread this disease, oh my gosh, you're, dude, you're gonna kill people. And it was just like very, like, I was just like, wow, like that, I didn't realize how seriously people were taking it until that point. Um, and there was also a big thing about blaming others when getting sick. I'm sure even today when you guys talk to non-submitters and they're like, yeah, I got COVID because this person didn't wear a mask or that person, this person gave it to this person, which gave it to this person, which gave it to me. And they don't ever really, it doesn't cross their mind like, huh, maybe I did something to get it, right? It's, not, it's just not a way they think. They always think it's just on this worldly physical level that they get sick and there's nothing else to it, right? Um, here's just a few pictures of going over the top. You guys remember the toilet paper fiasco? Uh, that was not a fun time. But yeah, there was definitely, I mean, there's more than this. I've seen people in full hazmat suits, right? But that just goes to show how they were reacting to this whole thing. Um, Nothing bad comes from God. Anything good that happens to you is from God, and anything bad that happens to you is from you. We have sent you as a messenger to the people, and God suffices as a witness. To God belongs everything in the heavens and the earth. God is in full control of all things. So, Marshall, these verses really teach us that we have nothing to fear during this time, because we know God is in control of everything, and we understand God's system that if we're meant to get sick, we deserve it, and it's going to happen, and there's nothing that can stop that from happening. And that's why I think it's important to focus on these. So that's basically what I want to talk about in this part where it says, you know, we have to remember God is our only protector. Like I said, there's nothing else that we can ever be protected by. We only have ourselves to blame when anything bad happens to us, whether it's getting sick, whether it's losing money, whatever it is. And we also know that God is the most merciful. I'm sure there were many times where we should have been sick or something bad should have happened to us, but because God wants to give us more chances, he, he's very merciful. He wants, he wants us to learn, and he wants us to be okay. And as, as always, we must put our trust in God. There's, there's nothing else we can trust other than God. He's the only one that can ever help us. So the next topic I want to talk about, right, we were talking about COVID-related fear, but now I kind of want to go into fear as a whole uh, subject, right, because there's fear in so many different aspects of other people's lives, hopefully not ours, but we, we see it from the outside. So, fear, the devil's tool. It is the devil's system to instill fear into his subjects. Do not fear them, and fear me instead if you are believers. So, 
we should never have any fear, we know this. And that's not an easy thing to do, right? Because it's, it's sometimes a subconscious thing that we can have fear about something and it'll come out in times we didn't even know we had it. So it's something that we constantly have to remember to put away in our mind and say, look, anytime you have a, you know, a thought of what if this happens, what if that happens, we can seek refuge in God, right? And we're so blessed to have that because there's nothing like that anywhere, okay? There's nothing like seeking refuge in God anywhere in this world. Something is happening to us. We are feeling, in a, we're feeling a certain way, frustrated, angry, fearful, right? We can seek refuge in God, and if we're sincere and we truly believe it, then God will help us, right? And that's not a luxury that anybody has by God's leave, except for submitters. And, you know, if, if we are going to have any fear, it should be noted that we should only fear God. We should be God-fearing people. Submission, the only religion. Indeed, those who submit themselves absolutely to God alone while leading a righteous life will receive their recompense from their Lord. They have nothing to fear, nor will they grieve. So I really want to put emphasis on they have nothing to fear, nor will they grieve. Because I've read this verse many times. I've seen this phrase many times. And I kind of just, it kind of just goes, my, you know, through my head. But it's, you know, doing this sermon, I, I kind of realized that that statement, although it doesn't seem like much, it's they have nothing to fear, right? There's we have nothing to worry about if we're following God, right? And that's something that, like I said, the general public cannot do. We can only, we only have, God is the only one that will allow us to live that way, where we can live peacefully without these things eating us up, right? And it's, it's truly an amazing blessing. So, you know, we see fear all around people that we talk to that are not submitters, and we see it through their children, their home, their money, their job, their school, right? Um, for me, actually, I, I see it firsthand with children because, much like I get to take care of some of the children here, and then I also work at Bay Club, and I see how parents react um, when something happens to their kid at Bay Club versus how, like, submitter parents react, and it's, it really, it's like real-life evidence that, like, you could see, like, someone who trusts in God is, like, very serene, like, they fall down, they get a bump, something happens to them and say, you know, we deserved it, um, they'll be okay, but then you have other parents on the other hand, why did this happen to my kid? Who wasn't watching him? How did this happen? Oh, are you like freaking out, right? And you're like, look, man, I understand there's fault on us, but hey, check yourself too, okay? <laughs> Obviously, I don't say that, but it's going through my head. Fear is also very expensive. So I looked at some uh, insurance costs and take this with a huge grain of salt because this is just like quick internet search stuff, but you know, they say uh, that people pay seven, almost $8,000 a year for health insurance, around 2000 a year for home insurance, about 700 oh, oh yeah, yeah, sorry, for a family, yeah. Uh, 700 a year for life insurance, and there's all these other insurance that I don't even know what half of these mean or what they pertain to, but it really does add up. And the funniest part about insurance to me is that they advertise it in a way that it's like, oh, we can prevent this from, ha or like, oh, you should have gone with us or else this is going to happen. Or, oh, that, that, oh, if you were with us, that wouldn't have happened, right? But in reality, they, they come after something has already happened. And they're so greedy and messed up that they find the way to pay you the most little amount of money for whatever you're supposed to be covered for, right? So their whole thing is just scamming people. And people actually put these, their trust in these guys. I mean, they're, they're wicked, right? There's also no sense of security. And like I was mentioning earlier, right, I've talked to like people and during, you know, any time about anything. And there's always like what ifs. Everything they say has to follow a what if. I give a rebuttal, there's a what if. Rebuttal, what if. It's like a constant, just, it's a constant ladder. And it's crazy because these things really do eat up at people. You can see it in your life, I'm sure, when you talk to non submitters, you can see like issues that to you by God's leave, they have no, like, they have no matter to you, right? You're just like, whatever about it. You're like, you know, what, what's going to happen is, go, is going to happen. If I deserve something, it'll happen. Inshallah, it doesn't, but, you know, I trust in God, right? Whereas these people are preparing, they're finding ways to try to get around it. They, they're just always thinking about it. And it seems like to me, they're, they have no sense of, like, peace, right? And, you know, 4451 says the righteous will always be, or will be in a secure position, right? So that's just... A straight, that's just straight up proof right there. We have nothing to worry about. God literally tells us that if we are righteous, we will always be in a secure position. So I really want to point out that we must be immensely grateful, right? Because we don't have to deal with this stuff 
like regular people do. We can live in peace with God, right? We don't have to think about what are go- like what's going to happen to us in the future, constantly planning for disaster, right? We plan for, for success by God's leave, right? We ask God, God grants it to us if we deserve it, of course. Um, and only, you know, I wanted to point out, only submitters can really attain this luxury. I mean, I'm sure there's people out there in the world, you know, that don't have as much fear as the average Joe, but if you were to ask someone, there's always something they fear happening, right? And a lot of the time, it's not God, unfortunately. God invites to the abode of peace and guides whoever wills to be guided in a straight path. So that kind of pertains to the last one, too. Um, And so for this one, you know, what I want to point out is that we have nothing to fear if we are righteous. God is in full control of everything in our lives, and our whole life is already planned by God. So when we think, you know, if we think that we can change an outcome in the future, we know we can't. And that's why it's pointless to be fearful about what will happen with something. Obviously, there's exceptions, right, where you you know you've done something wrong, and you're begging God for, for something bad not to happen, right? But you have to repent, reform, and do your part. But like I said, we do our part, God will do his part. So, to Allah, let's repent. Alhamdulillah, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa atayu la sharika la. We praise God and we bear witness there's no other God beside God. So uh, I forgot to do a timer. I liked Mirwise's uh, timer tactic, so I'm going to get on that. So um, when people have constant fear, they turn to lots of different things in life. And I, from what I've seen, um, the main one they turn to is intoxicants because it helps take the edge off, in their words. Um, intoxicants and gambling prohibited. O you who believe, intoxicants and gambling and the altars of the idols and the games of chance are abominations of the devil. You shall avoid them that you may succeed. So it talks about all all these different things, but what I want to focus on is that they're abominations of the devil. Satan has put these things here, okay, in order to lead us away from God because he knows that the humans are the most susceptible to things like these that are very easy to, to get and that lead us to do stupid things, unfortunately. So some, some statistics, uh, about 32 people um, in the United States die in drunk driving crashes every day. It's about 12,000 a year. Nearly 30,000 people die to an overdose on heroin or other opiate, opioids. Um, and 20,000 people die to other, like alcohol, cocaine, other non-opioid drugs. So that just kind of puts it into perspective. I mean, you think about most of these people, I mean, maybe not all, but they had people that cared about them, right? And, these things, they, they tear families up, they ruin people's lives, and we, for some reason, as a society, don't care. So here's some more things I found. There's probably lots and lots more, and these are just kind of like, it's everything, and it's like weed, alcohol, other harder drugs, everything. And these are all things that could happen if someone were to take part in it. Um, some of them are long-term, short-term, some of them are immediate, right? But this is just a few of the adverse effects, right? And we, we know there's much more. So there is no compromise whatsoever regarding illicit drugs and alcoholic beverages. They're called the, they're called abominations in the work of Satan, right? So like I said, I emphasized it already, but I just wanted to also say it talks about it in Appendix 35 because I feel like people find these things that like some people, (laughs) I've heard people talk about how these things are blessings for them and like how they thank, you know, God for these things. And it's like, I don't know about that one. I mean, they're literally ruining your life, but sure. Take your happy juice and get your hour of good feelings. Um, and what I also really want to show is that, Masha, we don't need any intoxicants or anything t- because we have God to provide us with that happiness in life, okay? We follow the Quran. We don't have that hole that, you know, everyone around us is constantly trying to fill, whether it's with money, drugs, alcohol, whatever, right? We have God, and when we're submitters, that hole is not there. When we're righteous, that hole is not there. God is the only one that provides happiness, right? And another point I wanted to um, really bring up, mainly it's, I don't know if this pertains to everyone, but for me around my age, you know, a lot of the people I knew from high school, they're always doing something to have a good time with each other, you know? And much so when we're, what I've noticed is like, it's so, it's very rare that people above the age of 21 get together and they don't partake in some kind of intoxicant while they're hanging out. Right? And, mashallah, it's amazing that we have this community because we're so blessed to have 
this group of people like-minded like us that we can hang out with anytime and we like each other because we're friends not because we have something that's like i mean obviously we have submission that keeps us all together regularly but we're not using some intoxicants or whatever to kind of stay all around each other we we like each other's company by god's sake and for me i don't know if you guys have seen this in your lives but that's something i personally notice a lot about people around me um a few conversations i've had when talking to non-submitters about this stuff you know it makes me happy it's fun. It's how I bond with friends. It's not that bad. Being sober must be so boring. Why don't you drink? I need weed for this, this, and this, and this, and this, right? <laughs> Anxiety. I mean, they talk, they need it for everything, apparently. Um, but, you know, the funny part is, is like, the being sober must be so boring one is one I get um, from a lot of people that, you know, I talk to about religion and all that when I first meet them. And it's not all the time. A lot of people are respectful by God's name, but they kind of in, insinuate that, like, how are you sober? Like, like, it's some kind of foreign thing, and it's just funny to me because it's like, it's like, how are you not bored? Like, it's the same thing every single time for you, okay? Like, why, like, you're not doing anything new. You're just sitting there and getting intoxicated, right? Like, what, how is that not boring? And it's, it's funny because this stuff has really gotten into people's minds. I mean, everywhere we see it, billboards, all, all commercials, right? It's really dug into their minds, and it just, it, it's, I can see why it's so hard for some people to get, get away from this stuff. Uh, excerpt, just an excerpt from 443 since it's like kind of a long verse and talks about a lot of different things. It's, what about, uh, it's about what nullifies evolution, but another thing I wanted to point out is, oh, you who believe, do not observe the contact prayers salat while intoxicated so that you know what you are saying. So another thing I just want, kind of wanted to point out is that for anyone who, you know, is coming to submission with, uh, you know, a lot of old baggage in the, from their old life, God understands it's not easy to quit. So he has this set of rules in there specifically for new people, right, in my, in my opinion, because he's saying, okay, look, if you're going to try to be in this religion, you're going to have to stop doing this stuff. And if you can't at first, you're, gonna, you're still going to need to try, but at least don't be intoxicated while you're praying. And with that, you know, there's five prayers a day, and intoxication lasts a certain amount of time, right? So over time, as a person's soul grows because they're doing prayers and they're doing it less and less, it'll get them fully away from it, you know, if they're truly sincere about being a believer. And, you know, Masha, I just thought that was a really uh, interesting thing. So for this one, you know, God tells us not to use intoxicants for our own good. And for me, growing up, you know, being around all these people, there was a desire because you'd hear people talk about it at school and their experiences and stuff. And I, f I found that as I grew up and as I grew my soul more and, you know, really focused on God more, that desire just goes away, right? And I know the messenger talks about this too when he says that, you know, the devil doesn't even try to um, come at him with intoxicant, like with uh, desire for that because he know the devil knows it won't work right he knows his soul is way too grown and that he's way past that stuff and that it's just not tempting to him anymore right and another big thing is forcing yourself to be with believers right because um a lot in a lot of the places a lot of people they tend to be like a not an entire carbon copy but they're very similar to the people that they hang out with right and they tend to be taking part in the same thing so god's saying force yourself to be with the believers so that you may become righteous right and you you want to be more and more righteous have good influences around you all the time and so yeah um so you know as we've seen intoxication can lead people to dark places in their life and most people still use them but that's kind of like my segue into anxiety and depression which is a huge thing that i'm sure a lot of us have seen people with um, in our lives, close people or friends. Um, so here's an excerpt from the introduction. It says, perfect happiness now and forever. One of the most elusive objectives of every human being is happiness. The Quran reveals the secret of attaining perfect happiness in this life and forever. We learn from the Quran that happiness is an exclusive quality of the soul. So an estimated 26% of Americans 18 and older suffer from some kind of mental disorder every year, which is pretty crazy. Um, around 40 million have an anxiety disorder and about uh, 9.5, so 10%, I guess, uh, um, suffer some, from some kind of uh, depressive mental illness. And then the verse 1697 says, guaranteed happiness now for anyone who works righteousness, male or female, while believing, we will surely grant them a happy life in this world, and we will surely pay them their full recompense on the day of judgment for their righteous works. So, Marshall, so this is a verse I really love because it shows that as long as we are always working righteousness and believing in God alone and doing our part, we get to live a happy life in this world, which as we've seen all around us, people 
spend their whole lives trying to find a way to be happy. And they use all these things, which I'll get into, God willing, but it's really awesome that all we need to do is to sincerely believe in God alone and we can live a happy life because, you know, that's it's a very elusive thing like it's said in the appendix. Um, I also want to iterate how the Quran, uh, there's a recurring theme of perfect happiness throughout the Quran. Uh, all of these verses, and there's more probably, talk about the Quran. You can see they're all different verses throughout the Quran, how God wants to really re, uh, reinstate it that in our minds that, you know, if we follow him, we will live, have a perfectly happy life here and in the hereafter, inshallah. So a few more conversations I've had with submitters uh, when they're talking about their depression or anxiety, you know, they'll, they'll say, I don't get why this is happening to me, right? And people never point the finger at, them, at themselves as we can see. Um, nothing will fix me, you know. They think they've tried everything. They think that they're just going to be like this forever and that there's no way to stop it. Um, they always talk about their medication. Uh, I, my doctor needs to up my dosage. Um, I don't deserve this. It's not fair, which kind of goes to the, back to the same one, right? But the it's not fair part is it's more interesting to me because it's saying, well, <laughs> everything in this life is fair, right? Whatever you have, whatever bad happens to you, you've deserved it. But obviously, we see everywhere in the world, nobody believes that, right? Um, they always turn to intoxicants, right? That's what they always do. And then when they become sober, they're, more, they're sad again, so then they need intoxicants, and then they're sad. So it's just a never-ending cycle. And I think the worst one that I've had to experience, right, when I've, when I've talked to my friends, right, um, and I talk to them about this topic, you know, I, I tend to mention God, and a lot of the time they, they just say they don't want to hear it, they don't believe in God, they say, they just say all these things, and it's like really, it's just sad to me, because I'm just like, dang, that, that, that sucks for you, because... <laughs> It's really, it's the only thing that's going to help, but go, go ahead. Um, another excerpt is talking about how getting up early in the morning helps combat depression and other uh, psychological problems. And I just wanted to kind of point out that there's probably so many more hidden benefits from Quranic commandments that are easier to identify and some that are, we don't even know they have like benefits to us. But that's why we say God is the best psychologist because he knows how things will affect us. So for this one, understanding God's system, you know, God is the only one that can provide us happiness. Quality of the soul is what correlates with happiness, right? So the more we grow our soul, the happier we'll be, right? As long as we're following God. And we have to know God's qualities and only rely on him at all times for happiness, for anything, really. And because so many people um, don't know their purpose in their life, they are depressed, right? But by God's leave, we know our purpose. And that's another big thing that a lot of people do not know. So, like I said, we're so blessed to know our purpose here on this earth. There's so many lost people around us, and many spend their entri entire lives trying to find purpose through everything. There's idols everywhere around us that people think they found purpose in, but they still have bad happening in their lives, and they can't seem to take a step back and think, maybe this is the problem. And a lot of the time, it's hard for people to pinpoint what's missing, right? They say, They'll have all these things and they just say, like, I don't know what it is. I'm still not happy. You know, I still feel like there's no purpose in my life. Um, here's a little thing I found when it talks about Americans describing uh, what provides their life with a sense of meaning. There's family, career, money, spirituality, and faith. But we know that's probably idol worship for 19.999% of those people, right? Um, activities and hobbies, health, home, and surroundings and learning, right? So... We are given all these things by God, mashallah. And they do, by God's lead, they make our lives happier and better. But in the end, the only real purpose of our life is to make it back to God and to grow our souls as much as we can. We did not create the heavens and the earth and everything between them just to play. We created them for a specific purpose, but most of them do not know, right? And just like I was saying, most, of, most people do not know what the earth, they think we come here, we do whatever we want, or... We were nice to people, right? And then we die and that's it, right? Or some people believe in a hereafter, but it's, they don't truly believe it in their hearts or else they wouldn't be committing idol worship, right? Um, in another excerpt, it says, uh, thus a body that attains all the material success it longs for, money, power, fame, etc., often belongs to an unhappy person, right? And so, you know, we talk to people, you know, what's your goal in life? I want to be famous. I want to have money. I want to have this car. I want my family to do super good. I want this, 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 right? These things, when they don't have God, I mean, we've seen so many famous people, you know, commit self-death um, 
and you know, just turn to drugs, overdose, all that stuff, right? And you think, you know, this person doesn't have a financial worry in the world. Anything they want, they can get it immediately. Anything they, uh, you know, everything they, they could ever want, they have. There's no sense of hardship in their life, right? So that's what an average person would think, right? But then we know as submitters that they're probably going through it the worst because they have all these things that they're, they're constantly taking up their mind and they probably don't think about God whatsoever, right? So that's probably why, I mean, in my opinion, that they, leave, they live the most unhappy lives. The purpose of our existence. I did not create the jinns and the humans except to worship me alone. I need no provisions from them, nor do I need them to feed me. God is the provider, the possessor of all power, the supreme. The transgressors have incurred the same fate as their previous counterparts. They should not challenge. Woe to those who disbelieve from the day that is awaiting them. All right, so we literally have a verses in the Quran that says the purpose of our existence, right? And that's something that's amazing to me. I mean, like I pointed out, the average Joe does not know the purpose. Many live in misery. So we've seen all around us that today's society is more godless than ever. And I just put the whole alphabet because there's probably one for every single one of those, right? <laughs> we have atheists everywhere. We have constant promiscuity being promoted all around us more and more and more. Idol worship everywhere. Promotion of intoxicants, right? Weed's legal in California and more states by the, you know, by the months, right? And we see billboards, commercials, all these things. Lots of violence and whatever else you can think of, right? And you would think that it would push people to kind of take a step back and be like, why is everything so bad today, right? Because whether people want to admit it or not, when you look around America and society, I mean, much for us, it's amazing. But for a lot of these people, they have so many problems in their life that pertain to way more than these. And you start to think, well, why are all these disasters happening to all these different people, right? And you kind of look around and you see all the stuff that's being pushed and all the they're trying to get away from God, right? I think we were talking about this in the text group yesterday when Sana's, they're in the uh, magazine and she talked a lot about God in the interview and they only ended up including her cats and their language, <laughs> right? And it's because people, I mean, unfortunately, being religious and following God has become a controversial topic today and it's, it's extremely sad. And, I mean, people are going to have to realize someday, God willing, you know, when the smoke comes. So for this one, we have to understand God's system, right? God gives us our purpose, right? We cannot take it for granted whatsoever. And we must constantly be checking ourselves, right? We don't want to lose sight of what the real purpose in this life is. And it's very easy as there are so many distractions, right? And we can enjoy these distractions, okay, as long as we keep God always first on our mind, okay? These things are here to entertain us by God's need to, you know, help us be happy. But God, in the end, is the only one that provides it. And we have to always make sure he's the top. We cannot be stagnant. And obviously, we never want to fall into idol worship, right? Whether that's of our job, money, children, cars, video games. Whatever is going to occupy your mind more than God, we have to make sure we're keeping that in check. So in conclusion, I want to say that we must remember that we're not above any of these things I mentioned, right? While some are easier to fall into than others, there is stuff that we can still fall into, and we have to stay extremely vigilant so that we don't become like them, right? God, we're supposed to set the best example, right? So because of that, we have to constantly be checking ourselves to make sure that, you know, if you see somebody who is obviously not a believer doing something that's wrong, and you're on the same level as them, what is that saying about yourself, right? We have to be very vigilant about this, and we have to be so happy that we have this message that God has, you know, uh, given us mercy and given us this message. And every day of our life, we have to remember that God has a perfect system, that it works flawlessly. And as long as we do our part, everything will fall into place uh, for us by God's sake, right? There's no flaws in this system. And it's just, it's amazing by God's sake. So, Akama Salat, let's pray. Allahu Akbar. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki al-Madin. Ya kanabudu wa ya kanastain. Itna sirat al-mustaqim. 
سرات الذين أمت عليهم قاعدة مكتوبة عليهم ولا تالين الله خير كفا بسم الله نعم دا الله خير كفا الله خير كفا الله خير كفا الله خير كفا بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الحمد لله رب العالمین الرحمن الرحیم مالک یوم الدین یا کنفد و یا کنستین ادن صراط المستقیم صراط الذین انعمت علیهم غیر مغضوب علیهم ولا ضالین الله اکبر سبحان الله سبحان الله سبحان الله بسم الله نحمد الله اکبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم الله وتعالى الشريك السلام عليكم السلام عليكم